Looks like my poor little laptop can't cope with this. It can get a bit weird if you go too mad. Here's where the magic happens. I'm gonna make... <laughs> Try that again, shall we? It's a pretty raucous pink right there, Barbie pink. Whee. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my devlog series where I'm learning Godo. It's a beautiful day, birds are singing. I'm just joking, it's grey as hell. And we are going to take a look at the mystical majesty that is auto tiles. Now what are auto tiles? I'll explain it as I understand it. It's a system whereby you can use a floor tile set with all the different side bits and corner bits and little rocks and walls and doors and all that sort of stuff. And you can overlay it with um, essentially a programming layer that understands where it is in relation to all the other tiles. And then you can use that to draw things. Like so much of this stuff, I don't fully understand it. <laughs> and that's what makes it so much fun. So to start with, we're gonna go to the tile map. We're going to click on Tile Set in the right. Then we're going to go down to Terrain Sets. Now I'm pulling this from memory, so bear with me. Add Element. And then we're going to select... There's three options. Match Sides, Match Corners, and Match Corners and Sides. Now I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to match corners and sides, but it is the more complicated one to set up. We're just going to go straight into that. Terrains, Add Element. We're going to call this terrain sand. And then we're going to pick a colour that contrasts quite heavily with sand. And you'll understand why. So I'm going to go with like a hot pink. Uh, if we look at this here, that's a pretty, it's a pretty raucous pink right there. Barbie pink. Excellent stuff. Now this is where it gets a bit strange. So let's select terrains. So what we do is we select tile set, select property, we want terrains, and then we're going to select terrain set, terrain set zero, which is the first in the list, and then we're going to select sand. Not the most intuitive, but once you've done it a couple of times, supposedly it'll make sense. This is my sand terrain here. I'm going to be going with this top left section. And um, what we want to do is highlight each square, and then we're going to manually paint out the floor. And the reason that we paint out the floor is that the floor sections are what are connected to each other. We do not want the walls included in the painting. So paint the floor, but not the walls. There are some exceptions to this <laughs> though immediately, which is kind of like I'm, I'm busting into that area there. And it's because really what it's doing is matching the very outer edge here and the corner, the sides and the corner, which is why it's called match corners and sides over here. So I'm gonna paint all of these. And if you are following along or interested, um, I will pause for a little while at the end and just let you look at the pattern. Go back, consult the layout of this, make sure everything matches. This bit in particular can be a bit tricky. This up here where it's actually overlapping the corners and sides a bit can also be tricky. So just have a look around, make sure everything matches there and you should be good to go. We want to be going into tile map. We're going to make sure that we're in the ground layer. We don't want to be adding ground to foliage, trees or rocks. Here's where the magic happens. So I'm going to make... A... <laughs> Let's try that again, shall we? Here's where the magic happens. I'm going to make a rectangle. And look, boom, a perfect space. I'm going to use the path mode and I'm going to make a path coming out here. Oh, look, it works. I'm going to do this. I'm going to link them back up. I'm going to make a little spiral. Oh, interesting. I'm going to make a little spiral here. <laughs> Where they connect, they will connect to each other. I'm sure there's a way you can program that out, but I don't know how to do it. And there we go, got a little, a few little offshoot tunnels here that, that our player can, can run into. Let's actually move our guy all the way down here. Oh, okay. I understand. The camera limits have changed. Haha! -ha. That was kind of weird. So let's just double this for now. Just to demonstrate what we're doing. The camera was not wanting to move. So there are no there's no sort of collision map or anything with this. As you can see, we've just created a new bit of terrain. We if I go back into the editor I can um I can really do some complicated stuff. So go back to the world node, let's go to tile map. Uh, let's go to sand and then we can just select let's move down there we can just select random bits and where you looks like my poor little laptop can't cope with this select bits and put splodges down 
and the splodges will kind of auto populate as rocks or whatever and then if you wanted to you could dump collision maps in there and, and also i think i can draw like a little pathway just in here it can get a bit weird if you go too mad so it's not absolutely flawless but it's certainly helpful the little rocks have showed up something about this reminds me an awful lot of pokemon black and white i think something to do with the visual of the rocks so what have we learned today i've learned that my laptop is too slow. We've learned how to assign and designate terrain sets to the tile map node. We've then learned how to select a colour to represent and contrast what we're drawing in. We've learned how to lay out the terrain set itself and then we've learned how to muck about with it. Thanks so much for watching. If you're watching on YouTube please consider leaving me a like. If you're interested in this series and want to come over to my Discord server, my very small community in there I like to talk about mostly about Slay the Spire to be honest. Otherwise just have a wonderful day. I hope the weather's good where you are and see See you next time. Bye for now.